So for update number two, we've got a bunch of progress in terms of prototypes, but we haven't gotten quite a solid robot done yet, but we'll show you what we're talking about. So first off, in terms of our dumper, you can see right here, this has enough space for both balls and blocks. I've just demonstrated with blocks right here, but this is the first prototype that we're using. And our prototype system is uh, for zero for things that we're inspired by and one, two, three for the actual prototypes themselves. So for this one that you can see here with the dumper, this was made in like, what, 10, 20 seconds, just a bit of tape and just like ripping up some cardboard, but uh, it all works fine if you tilt it properly. Now we've got a second one over here really quickly. This is the second rendition, so this was a bit more precise and it was folded down properly. But uh, the issue with this design is that it's a little too precise, right? There isn't much movement here and it's restricted specifically to blocks. So if I were to try something like balls, it wouldn't necessarily fit in. So this one would be good for blocks, just it's a little too precise. We need to make it a bit bigger, which is why I went for prototype number three which is most likely gonna be our final prototype. So as you can see right here, it isn't exactly a box and we did that intentionally because the point of this, if you can see these rounded corners on the sides, they're meant to be there for two main reasons. So first off, these balls can go straight in, right? And that too, it'll be able to have a bit of space. But the other reason is because we've got these blocks here, right? And when they go in, this is a lot of space that you're working with in order to get the balls to be there. That's what we need to have. But instead of getting that third block in there because this is nearly six inches, this uh, rounded corner allows it to block off those blocks. Huh? And basically, it just makes it a lot more efficient for us to collect. So this is better for both blocks and balls, and this is why we're using this as a dumper on the actual robot. So, as I mentioned, so as I mentioned in our first video and our intro, um, the first three hours, well, no, it became more like five hours, were spent on creating a drivetrain. Um, and this is that completed drivetrain over here. Um, we've uh, chained it, uh, we've used uh, Neverest 40s for uh, four total, two on each side, chained at a 1.5 to 1 ratio, because we believe that this is the appropriate amount, appropriate amount of speed for this year's challenge, um, namely because we really do have to climb the, um, climb the barriers, and uh, that's going to require quite a bit of power and torque. Um, we have a regular six-wheel Actobotics um, drive, um, and the center wheel, if you uh, can notice, I'm not sure if that's very visible on the video, is actually um, dropped. We've dropped it a bit so that we're able to have a nine-inch turning radius. Actually, no, more like eight inches because this is a 16-inch chassis. We gave ourselves a 16-inch chassis instead of an 18-inch because we want to be able to put an intake in the front of our robot, jutting out, so that we'll be able to collect from the um, the, the the barriers way way easier. Um, so with this six inch, with this eight inch uh, turning radius, we're able to turn in place very, very easily. Um, what we've done uh, is, uh, in addition to this, we've been using, uh, we've, we've done a very traditional Actobotic style drivetrain where we've been pillowing our um, uh, our axles and only um, uh, holding it on one side. And this has allowed us to make a very, very simple uh, drive, um, a lot, and it, it'll, uh, it's, it's very, very space efficient because of this. So uh, next up, we've got a really quick update. We've got a couple of rev hubs that we put on there. Uh, this was quite simple for us to make. It took us around like 10, 15 minutes. And uh, we've custom milled a couple of parts here to work with Actobotics that we could mill down the middle. And uh, next up, let me quickly talk about our intakes. So this right here is actually a prototype zero. This is something we worked on during the summer for the Relic Recovery Robot for the summer project we're working on with our six wheel. And basically the way this one works is that we have an intake based system in the center. This is uh, purely off of Actobotics. And uh, there's these two channels that attach to the sides of the actual drivetrain. And uh, this worked actually pretty well. We just uh, recognized that it needed a lot stronger of a gear ratio in order for it to pull in those glyphs. But since we're actually working with blocks instead of glyphs, we're gonna need a faster ratio, which is why we came up with this design over here which is our prototype number one. So this right here is that prototype number one. Could you spin it for me real quick? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's kind of how the intake works at this point. And if you were to put it with the dumper, right there, yeah, I got one. I, I can hold one, yeah, here. Sure, sure. So if I were to spin it like this, right, let's bring this up a bit more. You can see how it could go into the <laughs> dumper. There you go. There you go. It might go out sometimes, but that's why we're actually developing a roof on top of this dumper, just to make it a 3.5 edition. But this is the way the intake's gonna work as of now. So here we have a very, very rudimentary, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Team marker placer. Um, so this is um, actually a team marker that we created. As you can see, we got oh, revamped on one side, uh, overcharged on the other. And uh, this is actually the minimum dimensions for this team market. We decided that we sort of wanted to go for the minimum dimensions because it would just be much easier for us to place. Um, so here we've created this very, very uh, nice um, cardboard prototype. Honestly, this is just our type one, our, our um, prototype one. 
where we just hold this and hopefully in autonomous we can just go and uh, dump it out hope and just let it fall out onto our um, onto the playing field and um, finally, one of the things that we've also been working on is a hanging mechanism for both maybe the for both the beginning of the game and the end game. So this one's a bit of a doozy, but the place that we actually took inspiration from uh, for this design was our robot in um, uh, 2016. Was the hot wired robot in 2016 rescue? You want to explain how this works, Advey? Yeah, sure. So basically, this has a servo based latching mechanism. And we use springs in the middle just to make sure that the force and the tension all goes to the springs rather than the servos. So this allows for a servo-based controlling mechanism when it comes to the actual uh, hanging part of it. So that way we could be able to unlatch and latch back on so you could hang in the beginning of the match. But at the same time, it won't break the servo and put too much stress on it. So if I were to move it out like this really quickly, it'll... Yes, just... <laughs> a little bit of technical issues here, but it tends to move out because the servo controls these springs and essentially I'm not sure why it's not working right now but uh, there's these two latches right here that you could see basically once these two go out this pops out and uh, we're using a similar style mechanism to actually hang which we have a prototype of right there yep so um, we basically been using the principles that we use that was were used on that rescue robot for this mechanism now this mechanism seems pretty simple but it actually has quite a few moving components to it so as you can see the way this system works is we have a servo over here control and this controls a pulley based system which will move um, a spring the spring tension which will move our um, hanging mechanism down so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sliding up onto our hook uh, onto the hook on, uh, on the field and then closing this mechanism um, and then pulling right back down so that we'll be able to um, have a very very sturdy grip on on, on the uh, on the hanging mechanism on the field and the reason we did this um, using the spring based mechanism is because we knew that if we put direct tension on a servo the servo would break like 42 pounds there's no way a servo can take that much weight so by um, diffusing the weight across this Tetrix superstructure we're able to make sure that our servo will be intact and we'll be able to play this game for as long as we need it to so with that, in just about a few more hours, we have to still decide a time. We're going to be actually putting out the next update, which will hopefully be a bit more of a final based robot, but we're trying to put more things on there. So um, one thing that we just want to remind you guys is that if you have any questions whatsoever, please um, on the chat in our Twitch stream, tag at Spark Tech Education before you ask your question. And that way we'll be able to compile all, the, all those questions for a Q&A. For the last three hours, we haven't had any new questions, but if, there, if you guys have any, we'll be sure to address them in the next team update. Thank you so much.